Good morning again. So, <clears throat> today what's for lunch? Kohlrabi again. Cauliflower, bok choy again. Some peppers and some mushrooms. This today with some fish instead of tofu because I remember. Well, not that it's particularly defrosted, but it's on its way. It'll defrost in the pan. So, what am I going to be talking about today while I'm in the lunch? So, there's something that's kind of been on my mind for a while to do with people not, not managing to make changes in their life. And so, <clears throat> it's like, you know, I know I buy more and a lot about weight loss and things like that, but it's kind of, like I said once before, I'd like to do with personal philosophies and stuff like that. <clears throat> If you can't, if you're not even in control of what you put in your mouth, then what are you in control of? So that's kind of when people say that, you know, I just can't lose weight or, you know, I can't follow a diet or whatever. You know, it's like, what's really going on there? You know, it's not just the impulse to stick something in your mouth, there's something else going on. And it's like, so <clears throat> the issue of people bring up willpower a lot. When they talk about you know getting stuff done or you know going on a diet or you know whatever, and quite we, we think that willpower is what we use to do things that we don't really want to do, but I think most of the time willpower is just the wrong tool for the job. I mean, you know, willpower is the thing that you know, get you to squeeze out an extra ref or two, you know, when you're really working hard in the gym. Willpower shouldn't be the thing that gets you to the gym. You know, if you're actually using your willpower to squeeze out an, an extra ref, you, you know, you've already won the battle, you're there, you're doing it. So, it's, people try and, like, put it down, oh, I can't do this, I've just got no willpower. It's like, well, you know, that's not what you should be using anyway. I mean, the thing that gets things to happen, like, consistently, is get into routines. So, like, if you, or, you know, just, it's, it's doing things. The reason that the routines work is because you can get into, a, like, the habit of something, and you're not constantly asking yourself, do I really feel like doing this? Do I want to do this? Would I rather be doing something else? I mean, it's a given that, you know, most days, all of us would rather be doing something else instead of working. But we don't use our willpower to get us to work. Or if you do, you know, something serious would be going wrong. But, you know, that's just one of the things that you need to sort of get your head around. It's like, why, why am I using willpower to do this task? I mean, do I hate doing it? Do I think I shouldn't do it? Do I, is it just, is it just a one-off? Willpower is great for a one-off. But, you know, you can't go on a diet and be relying on willpower to get you through it. You know, it's, if you've got like a significant goal, you know, willpower just, it's not going to cut it. What you need to do is get into some kind of habit or, you know, do something that you can just do in an automated way. I mean, I know it sounds, you know, it might sound bad on some level, like, oh, what, you, you just want to stop thinking about stuff? It's like, no. But, you know, there, there are lots of things that we do all the time that I, that we can do because we do it in an automated way. And like, sometimes that's bad. It's like people are always going on about, um, you know, like, eating in, in a non, you know, you're not thinking about it, you're just shoveling stuff in your mouth while you're watching telly or something. You know, maybe that's not a great thing to do, but you know, there's lots of things that once you get into a habit and you just automate it, then it's great. I mean, <clears throat> oh, again, I, I have a routine for, for what I do during the week, and the only reason I can do it is because I don't think about it, because the day I start thinking about it, it's like it starts breaking down. So I get up early. I have my breakfast, 
partly because I, I never used to have my breakfast as soon as I got up. I used to just carry on with the day, but now that I'm doing this, like, I'm eating on a slow, slow carb type of uh, way, you, you're meant to have 30 grams of protein within the first 30 minutes of you waking up. So, I do that now. I get up, I have my breakfast, then I go out with the dog for an hour, just go for a walk, and I've even got, I don't even think about where I'm going to walk, I've just got my route, and I just do. And it's kind of nice, because, like, I'm out there at like half five in the morning, so the only people, other people out there, oh, other people who have a routine of doing something that early in the morning. So now I like it. I see lots of people, and it's you know we say hello, and you know it's, we don't stop to talk obviously because we're all busy doing our stuff. But you know there's lots of ladies out there jogging. It's a couple of guys, mostly women though. A couple of guys, and we just say hello. And it's nice. But I don't think about that. I just get up because it's not like it's fantastic exercise or anything like that to go walking, but it's good. You know, it's it's a good it's a time that I take. I have um, you know, I have an hour to listen to say I, I I like to listen to podcasts and stuff, but I listen to the type of podcasts that I need I wanna concentrate on, like that I don't want to be distracted from. So, you know, if I'm just going to listen to some Maybe I listen to Joe Rogan interviewing someone who's kind of funny. I don't do that when I first get up because I can do that, you know, anyway. You know, I don't I don't need to concentrate to do that. But you know, if I'm listening to something that's kind of interesting or you know talking about you know, some kind of book or philosophy or something that I really want to you know pay attention to and get something out of, then that's when I'll that's the time to do it. Or like if I'm listening to an audio book, so I'm. I'm a massive fan of audio books. I really, uh, I didn't think that, you know, I, I was quite the hardcore reader. But the fact that you can listen to stuff. I mean, what I tend to do is I bought some software so that I can turn ePubs and um, PDFs and stuff into audio. And it's a bit, you know, it's a bit clunky and stuff. The when it does it, but it's okay that you can you can do it. So there's loads of books that are available on the internet, PDF and EPUB that you can just you know impossible to that aren't even available on, on Amazon and stuff like that. And you know you can just download them and listen to them because you convert them into MP3 and stuff. So I get through loads of books like that. And if you think about it, just during the week, Monday to Friday, I have five hours, and so. I uh, I listen to books and I also a tip if you can if you can train your ear to do it speed it up because the uh, I I find that it makes me concentrate more you know because I can't just go through the motions if I've got it at something like you know one point seven speed or something I have to concentrate to understand it and the very fact of concentrating to understand it means that I'm listening better so that's just a a little tip then. I don't recommend it for like, you know, learning stuff for exams, but you know, just getting through a book and paying attention to it, it's, uh, it's really good. Anyway, my dog doesn't like going out in the rain because he's born in Spain and you know, it doesn't rain that often here. You know, when it does, it'll rain intensely, but it's not like we don't get that kind of the weather of where I grew up. So in Liverpool, it rains a lot. Well, certainly compared to here. And, you know, I, if the dog would have grown up in, uh, in Liverpool, I don't think he'd even notice the rain. But anyway, he doesn't like the rain. So what happens, he doesn't want to take him out and it's raining. He doesn't want to do a wig. He doesn't want to do a poo. He just looks at me every time like I slow down to learn to have a s sniff around you like turn back and start pull pulling on the lead to go on so when it's raining in the end we don't go on our hour walk because there's no point because he doesn't want to do it so what happens 
when I think about it, oh, you know, do we need to go out? Oh, it's raining. It's it's instantly for me like, all right, we don't have to do it because I'm thinking about it. And, you know, I've got my reasons and stuff, but you know, it also ends up when it's like, well, kind of looks like rain. Well, I won't do it. And so I could spend or expend willpower on, you know, come on, let's just do it. We can do this. And it's like, well, what's the point? I don't, I don't see the point in like forcing myself to go out for an hour walk, you know, when I'm like, I don't really feel like it or whatever. So I just don't, but that's, it's a conscious decision. I'm like saying, I'm not going to use my willpower to make myself go out for a walk because, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Now on other things, so when I, you know, when you do need your willpower, is maybe, you know, something specific. It's like, so I, in general, I'm not using willpower to like regulate what I eat because, you know, I've got me, as I've gone on about, you know, right now I'm doing the low carb thing, eh, the slow carb thing. But like, even when I was just, and also I don't, I don't eat meat, so that's kind of handy that that's actually a good thing because it, a good thing in in the sense of getting into habits because it just means that you can just like there's loads of things that I used to love eating when I uh, ate meat that I just off the menu now so when in package the kind of especially being in Spain the kind of things that you can snack on are great you know there's loads of dried meats and there's loads of like sausages and stuff like that there's, Loads of stuff, like really quite calorific stuff that you can just snack on when you're a little bit peckish. <clears throat> and I don't really, you know, that's not really as available. I mean, I eat fish and stuff, but it's not like I'm going to open up a tin of tuna because I'm a bit peckish, you know what I mean? So anyway, that's like another habit that I got into. Of I don't have to worry about, you know, I'm not using willpower. It's like, oh, I'm a bit peckish. What do I need to eat? It's like, it's like, oh, can't be asked, you know, I, I, I'll just wait till lunch or I'll just wait till next meal. I mean, I eat every four hours approximately anyway. So it's not like, it's not like I have to, you know, wait that long, you know. And I have, as you've probably noticed, I do put plenty on my plate. You know, it's not like I'm uh, starving myself or anything. So... <clears throat> You know, so what do I use willpower for? You know, that's that's kind of a good question. I don't know. I don't. I try not to use it all that often. Maybe it's when I've got to do something. You know, like I probably use a more to put on a, a, you know, a good face when I've got to do something with the kids that I don't want to do, or you know, that takes willpower. Or you know, I, I guess it's like when I'm offered stuff when I, on a social occasion or something that I, I tell you when I use willpower. When I go, like sometimes I'll meet up with a friend or something and we'll eat out. So that's like quite a typical thing to do in Spain, you know, like, and everywhere, but you know, it's more common. People like eat out at lunchtime quite a lot, so it's kind of easy to just say, hey, yeah, should we meet up for lunch such and such a day? And like, just go, even though they're at work, they come out for lunch and you, know, you have a chat for an hour or two. So when I do use my willpower, is I love chips. I just like love them. And in Spain you get some brilliant chips, some lovely, lovely, lovely chips. Not always, but like there's a you you quite it's quite common to have like a set menu when you eat. You know, out and like so it's you know, you can choose from like three starters, three mains, you know, like you get a dessert and all stuff like that. And um so often I'll you know, I'll I'll order something that's got you know, that fits in, you know, because it's quite you know, there's loads of um, people eat a lot of legumes and stuff in, in Spain and so that's kinda of easy or you get a salad or 
you know, there'll be like um, a thing called a revuelto, which is like something like fried with egg. And so there's loads of that that you can, you know, vegetable ones of them, and that's just, you know, easy to uh, order. So I never really have much of a problem ordering stuff at a like bar stroke restaurant. But sometimes you get some really nice chips with them. And they're just, you know, they're totally fresh. They, you know, they just come on. They're not even like second fried. It's just like, you've just done them and they're there and they're already salted and they're just so nice. And that's when I'm using the willpower not to eat them, especially when they're already on my plate. But you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, take the, uh, the carpet. I mean, at the weekend, like on a Saturday, I have, I have a day off and I just eat whatever I want. I mean, literally whatever I want. And so, you know, quite often chips will uh, figure in that. But, uh, so that's, it's like something that's, you know, a one-off is when I think willpower is what you need to do. I mean, you know, think of someone who's like identified as like being, you know, the disciplined king. I mean, like David Goggins, David Goggins, right? So, you know, he does all kinds of crazy stuff. He's like, you know, decides to go on a 20 mile run or something, just or, you know, whatever he does, you know, and he'll go for the chin up record or something, you know, where he did thousands of chin ups in a day and stuff like that. So like some of the things that he does are willpower things, but other things, is just his, you know, his, his routine. And, it, and even though his routine looks nothing like a normal human being's routine, it's still a routine. You know, he's still, he still got in the habit of, I'm just going to do this. And he's not really using his willpower. He's probably using his willpower on, like, you know, when he's do, go, doing this thousand, you know, whatever, chin up and his hands are all bleeding and stuff, you know, that's right, I'm just going to ban these out. That's his, you know, I can see that being a willpower thing. But I think he just has this routine of like, I'm just going to do it and now I'm in, the, I'm, I'm in the moment and I'm just going to do it. And also, let's face it, if David Goggins recording it, then he's going to do it because... You know, imagine how much is at stake if David Goggins quits doing something like it, then that'll be it, then the mystique would just be gone. So, you know, maybe that's a, a thing, you know, instead of willpower, like accountability is a is a big thing as well. And so that's one of the things that you, you see with you know, someone like David Goggins, is like, he's never going to fail, like live on YouTube. I mean, for all I know, he, he tries to do like a 20, you know, a 24 hour run every day or something and doesn't do it and it's only when he succeeds that he goes on YouTube, I somehow doubt it, but, you know, I go on. But yeah, you know, accountability, if you can make yourself accountable for things, then you're less likely to not do it. I mean, even if, if you think about it at work, you know, when you've got stuff to do and like you the whole reason that what you do is managed, it's just because, well, you know, tomorrow I've got to talk about this thing that I've done, so I better get my finger out and get it done. Or, you know, it's like, I can't I'm a software developer, so we have scrum meetings and stuff, and you're always thinking, right, what can I show at my scrum meeting? So, like, it, it just helps you organize what you're doing, and you, you might do the most productive thing first, or, but you know, it's 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 moving you forward, there's a momentum to it. And it's not just you know, no one it's not like anyone expects you to be using willpower to actually do your job. You know, of course not. You're motivated extrinsically by the money, obviously. You know, how many how many people would do the job if you didn't get paid for it? I mean not not that many. I don't even think that like, you know, people who live the I always used to wonder, because I'm like the kind of person that if you make me do something that I instantly just don't want to do, I've, I've always been like that. 
always, always, always. Even since I was little. And I was thinking, I used to like joke about this at university. Like, if I was forced to be a porn star, I'm forced like to be with all these gorgeous women. I bet I wouldn't want to do it. I just bet I wouldn't. I bet I'd just go, oh, can't I just do something else? Can't I just go and write some code or something? Because I'm just stupid like that. I just have this kind of stupid know, defect in my brain that I don't seem to be able to do anything that I've got to do, that I'm forced to do. You know, for the for the sake of it. <clears throat> I just hate doing it. So, yeah, well, um, so that's what, so when you, so another, like, going back to, like, the way I'm eating now, which is, like, the, uh, the slow car thing, you, you basically, not that I'm trying to, I'm not trying to sell the slow car, I'm just trying to explain why it's good to put limitations on your choices so that you can just, like, get through the day easier. So every day before, and not that I've made a load of videos, but before I do this, all I do is I go down, I just go and look in the fridge and just see what I've got to eat. And then I bring it up so that I'm not like forgetting stuff and having to go to like to the guys to get something out of the fridge or whatever. And then I just, that's all I'm going to eat. And so I've instantly limited me, my choices and you know what I'm going to eat before. I don't, so I don't have to think about it. I'm not talking and like thinking oh what have I got to do now it's just like this is the only food I've got it's going to get chopped up and put in the pan and so like before that I only buy the stuff I mean obviously I buy stuff for the kids and my wife and everything but I just have my food organised and so like well what things can I eat and it's like loads of things obviously but I don't eat potatoes I don't eat rice I don't eat pasta you know I don't eat anything like with the high glycemic index, I don't eat fruit. Um, you know, I don't eat potatoes. I might have just that really. um, <clears throat> And so it's easy because these are just the things that I have around, and that's just what I eat. So I don't. It's not stress. It's not like I'm not burning through willpower just to decide what I'm going to eat. So like, if you're going to, you know, if you're trying to lose weight or, you know, control, you know, just get in better shape or whatever, you know, you're going to have to control what you eat. So make it easy. Don't be, you know, setting yourself up to fail by, you know, buying shit that you shouldn't be eating anyway because as an adult or, you know, don't rely on your willpower to stop you eating the chips every day. Because you'll just, there'll be a day when you'll get there and you'll be too hungry and you'll just eat them and you'll be like, ah, one day doesn't matter, it's only one day. And it's true, one day doesn't matter. But that's just the way it happens. That's how you, that's how you fall off the wagon for like everything. It's just like, ah. Oh. I used to, so this is something that used to happen to me all the time. I would. So I'd be trying to eat and then like paleo and I'd be you know I'd be quite motivated and you know Monday morning come along and it's like yeah right I'm paleo and so I'd be paleo and then I'd have me paleo breakfast and then I'd get to lunchtime and like I'd be feeling a bit down maybe you know like a bit stressed at work or whatever and it's like, oh, why don't I just treat myself to, I go and have lunch, you know, it's Monday, that's why I'm feeling a bit shit, you know, I just, if I just go and have lunch, it'll be fine, and so I, I go and, when you have lunch here in, in Spain, like, quite often, you know, you're usually in the set menu, you, know, you get, um, like, a, yeah, a drink, obviously, with it, but, you know, it'll be, like, a beer, or, if it's wine, you get, like, a whole bottle of wine, that would be a shitty wine, but, you know, who cares? So like maybe I'd so well I'd have a, I'll have a glass of wine because like wine's paleo, believe it or not. And 
So I start having a glass of wine and you know, my lunch would come and by then I'd had a glass of wine and you know, the chips are looking really good, so I'd eat the chips. And then, then I'd like, well, you know, I've already spoiled it, so why don't I just, I can have desserts as well, who cares? And so I'd have some nice dessert, you know, obviously, pay off, you're not meant to be eating sugar and stuff like that. I bought a wood, it was like, oh, well, I've already broken it, it doesn't matter, you know, it's a, one day, it's just a day. And then, so then I get into the groove of it, and then maybe I'd finish the bottle of wine or something, or, you know, have half a bottle of wine. And then, you know, I'm feeling quite, you know, my mood's lifted now, obviously, because I've just had half a bottle of wine. And so, you know, you go back to work and coast through the afternoon or something. And, uh, you know, then the evening comes and then maybe, oh, well, you know, I feel like a couple of beers. Seems as though I've kind of spoiled the day anyway. I'll just have a few beers and stuff. And then, then I'm not eating properly at all. And then at some point in the evening, I'll get to the point of like, I think to myself, why don't I just take this week off? You know, I can't really, it's, you know, it's only a week. It's not like I'm going to be, I'm not going to go that mad. I'll just take a week off and like, maybe I'll, you know, go for lunch and, you know, just, I, I won't drink half a bottle of wine, but I'll just, I'll just go for lunch and take it easy. And, and so, the, the good intention of like the, the morning, of, the, of Monday morning, by Monday evening, I was taking the week off. And so when I wake up on Saturday, on, um, on Tuesday morning, I'm like, oh, well, it's okay, because I'm taking this week off. And so I've ridden myself of all the guilt. I was fine, yeah, it's okay. You know, we're taking this week off. But what happens before you know it, or before I know it, I'd like put on 10 kilos again, and then I'm back at square one or so it felt like. And it's just like, oh, you know, I've done it again. And the reason is I was trying to use willpower to like try and fix things that weren't going right in my life. And that's another thing. If you find yourself using, like you've got to rely on willpower for everything, why is that? You know, what is it that, you know, what, what's, What's the behaviour that you're trying not to do, but you obviously haven't like tackled? No, it's not like you. There's something else going on. Because even though, the, you know, you, you know, if you're comfort eating, which I guess I was, it was just to like handle stress. I'm like, but well, why was I stressed? And so, because why? Well, maybe I was stressed about my job. Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't even know what was it. So I didn't. I don't really like to overanalyze because you can just drive yourself nuts by like thinking, oh, why did I do this and why did I do that? But what I did used to find is that there'd just be some kind of like background level of you know, stress or, you know, just like not feeling good that I just was just sitting along. So anytime that I, I had an opportunity, like a little skate file, you know, it's like trying to let a little bit of air out of a balloon with a pin. You can't. It's just like, bang, that's it, right, I'm, 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 I'm free. I'm just going to do what I want. It's fine. And then I was feeling better, but I'm just riding this wave of, I don't know, you know, there's something that, of like escapism. I was, right, you know, feeling good about, aha, I've left it behind and I'll worry about that next week. And then it's just, it's only when I'm like, managed to, you know, get me head around things and just simmer down and, you know, actually ask myself questions. Why do I feel like this? What is this? You know, you know so if you find yourself having to use willpower, you know, maybe just take the time to, you know, think, well, you know, why is, what, what's going on? All right, what, 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 what's making me unhappy? Because something's making me unhappy. And for me, that, a big part of that was like um, meditation. Learning to meditate is just, you know, it's quite a powerful tool. And like I said yesterday, the, the thing that, that I found the most helpful, and you know, I still do, is just that you can, you can realize that the thing that you're feeling in your body, you know, this, it's not 
it's not what's happening. It's what you've perceived and you've sort of, you know, you've alchemically changed the situation to a feeling that you, you know, you feel physiologically. And maybe, although it's helpful to feel things, obviously, you know, that's what you know, being human is all about. But sometimes it, 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 just, it can just be pulling you in the direction that you don't need to go. Or like, you're not acknowledging something that's making you feel a certain way that you could probably just change if you could just get out of the loop of, oh, I'm just feeling this and I don't want to do it. And, you know, so meditation, if you can actually get to just, and like I said, the, the cigarette paper between like what you're perceiving and what you're feeling, you just, they're not the same. And then you can start to, you know, so it's like undo the knot of, of your feelings with with your intentions, with the situation, because it's all just stuck together. And if you can just sort of tease out the things, then you can, you know, you can do something about it. So what I have managed or, you know, figured out is I was, I was trying to escape things that weren't good in my life, but I wasn't fixing them, I was expending exactly zero energy on fixing the root cause. So, you know, that's just, and, it, and it's easy to like, so, you know, you, you read all these great books about, you know, the gurus who are like, oh, you know, do this and do that, and, but at the end it's like, you just gotta get shit together. And it's not until you actually get to the point where you where you really really want to do it that you'll actually manage to do it I mean I know loads of people I mean obviously in my generation almost everyone smoked certainly in Spain everyone smoked it was my age at some point in my life I never had but, but almost nobody does I don't really know very many people my, I don't think I know anyone my age or maybe one my wife's friends but there's hardly anyone I know who smokes. But all of them try to give up smoking umpteen times. Because you know, everyone knows that smoking's not good for you and stuff, and you know, you can choose to do it, whatever. But it was only at the point where like they only actually succeeded in giving up smoking when when they just had completely decided and that was it. And there was no there was no trick to it. It was just like, right, that's it. I, I, I don't want to smoke anymore. And like me, we were drinking. It was only when I didn't, well, not that I actually tried to give up drinking, but it was just, I got to, it was just the realisation of, I don't want to drink anymore because I've got other things to do in my life. And I loved drinking. I was, I really loved it. And I was really good at it. And, you know, it was very much part of my identity. And it was certainly part of me like my identity with how people um it's not going to fit in there, is it? Uh, it was certainly how people you know thought about me as like oh Fran you know you just sit there and drink beer all day he doesn't really seem to get drunk and I used to like that you know I mean obviously they get drunk but you know I just managed to sit still or whatever or you know everyone else was just more drunk so the least drunk look does, looks like he's not drunk or something I don't know. but uh So, but it didn't take any willpower. I used zero willpower to stop drinking because it wasn't about that. And I think, I think if you're trying to achieve something and you realise that you, you need willpower to do it, then you know there's something wrong. Maybe you don't really want to do it or maybe you want to do something, you want to achieve something that's adjacent to this goal that you think you have. But it's not really that, you know, you're not really looking to, I don't know, you know like, so you say, oh, or, right, I'm going to go to the gym before I go to work, and so I'm going to get up at half six, and like, getting up at half six is just a killer. But getting up at half six wouldn't be a killer if you went to bed early. Or maybe you don't want to go to bed early because you hate your job, and like, you just want to, you know, you're just hanging on to the last bit of freedom before, because once you go to bed, then you're like, going down the slide and it's just a slide into work no matter even if you go in the gym first or whatever it's just 
you just go on and go into work and you can't stand it. So trying to fight that by going to the gym and getting up early and just being tired all day, you just not it's not gonna help. You know, you need to think, all right, I hate this, I hate my job, right, I'm gonna wanna do something about this. Maybe I should look for another job, or I can't because well, maybe I need to like learn something, maybe I need to do a course, maybe I don't know. But you know, you, you're going along the right track so that eventually when you don't hate your job, that's the day that you find that getting up before work an hour early is, is easy because you don't hate your job. It's like it, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not gritting your teeth getting onto bed. Anyway, looks like my lunch is ready. So I'm going to stop talking and eat my lunch. So like I said, today is largely similar to what I had yesterday. Except no tofu, fish instead, and looks like I got a red pepper in there, some ginger. Oh yeah, lentils, mmm, lentils. Lentils to fill me up and keep me full. And so I probably won't, well, not that probably, I, I, I won't be having anything else to eat now for like, till about four o'clock or something. And that's where I'll have my next meal. After that it'll be like 8 o'clock or whatever. Anyway, that's my lunch, my stomach is rumbling. And uh, we're done for the day. See you tomorrow. Actually no, I won't see you tomorrow. See you next time.